Hello everyone and welcome to another Pyro Gaming video. So whether you're a new player to Destiny or you're a returning player or you've been playing the whole time, chances are if you're watching this video you're a little confused about how damage buffs and debuffs work in Shadowkeep. And rightfully so, it, it gets really confusing as to what does what, what percentages does what, because this information isn't just flat out listed in the game. Bungie has told us what these um, values are in the Bungie Weekly Updates, but you know, if you don't follow that stuff, like I said, it's it's hard to get this information aside from testing yourself. So let's talk about global buffs and global debuffs. But before we get into that, let me give a quick shout out to one of my new sponsors, eWin Racing. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I will only promote stuff on this channel that I use personally. I'm sitting in this chair right now and I absolutely love it. With the holiday season coming up, if you or somebody that you know is in the market for a new high-end gaming chair, head over to eWinRacing.com. You will find a link in the description box below and offer code PYRO will save you 30%. That's big time savings, guys. So starting with global buffs, they no longer stack with each other. It's, it's, you only get to use one of them and the game automatically picks whichever one is highest. So these are your global buffs. You have Weapons of Light, which comes from Titan Bubble. You have Banner Shield, which also comes from the Titan. You have Well of Radiance and Empowering Rift and Guiding Flame. You also have Sun Warrior and the Lumina buff. And then you have some other little specific buffs like um, Inertia Override and Frontal Assault. Now, these all have different values. Uh, not all buffs are created equal, and I'll give you some examples of this. So for the 35% damage buff, this is the top tier damage buff. 35% is the absolute most you can get out of a damage buff. And if any of these are applied, all other buffs are canceled because like I said, the game is going to pick the highest buff possible. So on the 35% damage buff tier, you have Weapons of Light from the Bubble, you have Banner Shield, and you have Lumina. Now Lumina was supposed to be 30%, but all tests that I've done, as well as everything that I've read, are showing that Lumina is in fact giving a 35% damage buff, which is good, because previously, before that, Titans were going to be the only class that was capable of giving you that 35%. Now for the 25% damage buff tier, this is 10% less than Lumina and Well of Radiance, or not Well of Radiance, Weapons of Light. At 25%, you have Well of Radiance, Empowering Rift, and Guiding Flame. These are all Warlock things. The 25% damage modifier is, like I said, 10% less than this one. At 20%, you have Sun Warrior, and then you also have 20% modifiers to Weapon Damage, which is where Inertia Override and Frontal Assault come in. Now, like I said, these are all buffs, and the buffs do not stack. So, if you put down a weapons bubble that gives you 35%, you shot an enemy with Lumina, and or you shot a teammate with Lumina, rather, and you were standing in a well, that should be 95% extra damage, right? 35, 35, 25. No, it's 35, because the bubble is the highest one, as well as Lumina, so the game's going to pick either Lumina or Weapons of Light, and that's all you're going to get. It's going to cancel out the other ones. So super coordination is going to be really good. It's going to be really handy so that you're not just wasting stuff. So now let's talk about global debuffs. Now a debuff is an effect applied to a boss that makes them receive more damage, which to you, that means you're doing more damage to that boss. Debuffs no longer stack with each other, but a damage buff like Weapons of Light and a damage debuff like Oppressive Darkness will stack. You can have one of each and the debuffs work the same way that Weapons of Light does. Although the debuffs are, they're, they're a little bit easier to keep track of because they're the same across the board, they're universal. So your global debuffs are both of your tether classes on Hunter, whether it be top or bottom tree, uh, Shattering Strike on Spectral Blades, Hammer Strike on Titans, and the Tractor Cannon debuff. Now previously, Tractor Cannon did 50% damage to Void enemies, but only 30% damage to Solar and Arc. Now it's just 30 across the board, uh, as are the rest of these. Hammer Strike, for example, is also going to be 30% damage debuff across the board, but what makes Hammer Strike good is it now lasts 10 seconds instead of 5 like most of the other ones. Okay, so just to recap, damage buffs, things like Weapons of Light on the Bubble, 
You only get to use one. It's going to pick the highest one, which the highest are Weapons of Light on the Bubble, Banner Shield on Titans, and Lumina. And debuffs are 30% across the board, no matter if you're using Oppressive Darkness or Tractor Cannon or uh, Hammer Strike. It doesn't matter. It's 30% across the board, and it's only going to use one of them. So, taking all of this information into consideration, the highest buff that you can have is Weapons of Light. The highest debuff that you can have is any of them at 30%. So, for example, Oppressive Darkness, which goes really well with this. Right now, my Titan is specced for 65% more damage right out of the box. And that is the highest that you can have with a single buff and a single debuff. Now, let's start talking about some specific class builds. So, let's say, for example, you are running a Well of Radiance Warlock. So, with the Well of Radiance Warlock, you are getting a 25% damage buff from your super, but you cannot run Oppressive Darkness to get that debuff because you're on a solar subclass and this has to be void. So what are your options? Well, your option is Tractor Cannon. That's how you get the debuff on the Warlock and you have the 25% damage buff along with the 30% damage debuff to give you 55% more damage, just 10% less than a Titan. Still very good. Now, you can also run something like Lumina on a... Um, say Devour Warlock, which is Void subclass, Lumina is going to give you that 35%, and then you can run Oppressive Darkness, which is going to give you 30%, and that's going to bring you up to 65% extra damage, just like the Titan, so now the Warlock is on the Titan's tier. Let's talk about Hunters. Tether is a 30% damage debuff across the board, doesn't matter which one you use. So is Shattering Strike, but let's be real, if you're in PvE, you're going to use Tether over Spectral Blades. You can also run Oppressive Darkness on that subclass since you are running Void. However, it will not stack with Tether. This is going to be an extra thing that you use when your Tether is not active. So you have your 30% damage debuff either by Oppressive Darkness or by Tether. So now you add Lumina to that to get the 35% damage buff. And you now have 65% extra damage that you're doing, which is equivalent to the Titan. Now, there are some caveats here. There are some things that stack on top of these. Things like Divinity, which is technically not a buff, nor is it a debuff, even though it says it weakens and disrupts them. It doesn't count as a global debuff. So Divinity, for example, will stack with one buff plus one debuff. Now, I've tried to test Divinity and see exactly how much extra damage you can do, and I could not come up with a solid figure. I think it's somewhere around 25%, but I, I can't guarantee that. Divinity is currently kind of buggy, and it gives you different values uh, versus different bosses. So I can't give a solid number, and I won't because of that. But I do know for sure that on most bosses, Divinity will do more damage or allow you to do more damage when Weapons of Light and Oppressive Darkness is both active. So Divinity does not count for a buff, nor does it count for a debuff. It is its own thing. Some other things to keep in mind are things like mods. For example, the Dreambane mod reduces damage you take from nightmare bosses. Wrong one. Okay, let's use Enhanced Relay Defender, for example. Gain a powerful increase to weapon damage while within 5 meters of an active Vex Relay. This is only active in the Garden of Salvation raid. Uh, this is currently one of the best strategies for the final boss in Garden. Uh, this is kind of like the Dreaming City um, Transcendent Blessing perk, or Transcendent Blessing mod, rather. Uh, you can have up to five of these stacked on your character. Each one, I think, gives you a 7.5% damage increase. So this is all supplemental to the buff-debuff thing. It's not affected by it because it's not one or the other. So you can have five of these on your armor. Stack that with Divinity. Stack that with the weapons of light and stack that with oppressive darkness and you are doing some big time extra damage that's one of the reasons that it is such a good strategy right now is because you can literally melt the boss this is a lot of extra damage now another example of this um, is the transcendent blessing mod you can have five of these on your armor you will do more damage while in the dreaming city so things like the last wish raid and it is not suppressed or nerfed or affected in any way by the buff debuff combo same thing goes for all of the Crown of Sorrow slash Leviathan mods. Uh, Emperor's Balance, Emperor's Shock, and Emperor's Blaze are all supplemental. They are all added to the buff-debuff. They're not affected by it. 
And same goes for Striking Hand. It gives you an extra 20% damage while on the Leviathan. These are all completely unaffected by it. Now, same goes for a lot of weapons and armor pieces. So things like, um, let's see here, Heart of Inmost Light. Using one ability will improve the others, meaning it makes the others do more damage. This is unaffected by the buff debuffs. Worm God Caress. Melee kills increase melee damage. This melee damage stacks on top of the buff debuffs. Uh, same thing for Syntheseps. Thing, same thing for pretty much every exotic that doesn't specifically say buff debuff. Now the same goes for weapons. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, stuff like Master at Arms or Master of Arms, uh, things like uh, Explosive Light, things like um, the Honed Edge bonus that you get here. All of these are unaffected. They are added to the buff debuff. You see, these are global, meaning they go with everything, but you can only have one of each. Some other examples that will stack are like if you were doing strikes this week, it is or today it is Grenadier and Arc. Both of these are supplemental. It's not gonna be affected by the buff debuff because it is not a buff nor a debuff. I hope this is making sense because this is a question that I get asked all the time. I'll post something in a video and somebody will always argue with me and they're always wrong about it. I'm not saying that I'm never wrong. I definitely am sometimes, but hopefully this clears up a lot of confusion because, uh, yeah, this is a question I get a lot. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you have any further questions, drop them in the comment box below. Myself or probably someone else will see it and hopefully answer it. But that's going to bring this video to an end. If you enjoyed it, click like. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe. And if you are already subscribed, I fucking love you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and take care.